Hello, this is session 3.4, Special Characters 1, in the course Introduction to Desktop Publishing. We're going to go over a slideshow about special characters, and then I will show you the different um, how to insert special characters in Microsoft Word and in Publisher. So, and you will have the PDF of this slideshow in your resources, so you can go over it at your leisure. Let's let's share the screen. Here's the slideshow. So we're going to start with a Bible verse and a prayer. The Bible verse is Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2, in the contemporary English version. Our Lord, in all generations, you have been our home. You have always been God, long before the birth of the mountains, even before you created the earth and the world. Father, sir, we're so very grateful for all your blessings. We thank you for the beautiful world you created for us. We thank you for our families, for our church family. And we praise you for all you are, not just for what you do for us, but because you are holy, you are precious, you are uh, full of grace and mercy. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So special characters are letters that you cannot just type on the keyboard. They have accents, they have diacritical marks. You can't type them by just typing a key on the keyboard or by holding the shift button down and typing a key. And here's a few examples of some special characters. So here's some terms to learn. You may not need to learn it as long as you know what is going on. Uh, there's an acute accent, goes on many, many uh, letters, a grave accent, a circumflex, a caron, a tilde, an umlaut, an overdot, an underdot, a breve, a sedilia, an open O, a long N, and there's so many, many more special characters. And also you can have more than one diacritical mark on top of a, or under a character. It's a combination of diacritical marks. And um, that's it's really very interesting. So we're going to show you how to insert a symbol in my, Microsoft Word and Publisher to get a special character. You would select insert in the top menu tab, the top control panel, select insert. And then in that page or that tab, you would select symbol and you would select more symbols. And we will show you more what we mean in a minute. So here is a picture of a symbol pop-up box. It pops up when you select symbol and more symbols in Microsoft Word or Publisher. It's showing you many, many characters. And at the bottom, it would show you recently used characters, recently used symbols. So you could just double click one to get one quickly. And here it's showing what the font. And over on the right, it's showing, uh, there's a window where you can go to a subset, a set inside of the these, um, special character symbols. So we will be showing you some more about that. So you can scroll to find the character you want and you could double click it or you could touch the character that you want and then click the insert if it's down at the bottom or just double click. Oh, here it is, I'm trying to find it, the insert um, box down here at the bottom. So if you don't see the symbol that you need, you might have to change your font or other settings or go to a subset. And we'll show you all about that when we get to Microsoft Word. So here's where the subsets would be shown and the little arrow there to select them. 
So we're going to be looking at combining diacritical marks. There would be accents. They might go on top of your um, letter, your normal letter, or they might go beneath your normal letter. First, you would type a plain letter. Then you would go to insert, insert symbol, more symbols. You'd scroll down to find the diacritical marks, or you would select di diacriti combining diacritical marks in your subset window. First, um, I will show you when we get the Microsoft Word, there are modifying symbols. And, and then after that, there are the combining symbols. The modifying symbols don't go under or above your letter, your common letter, but they would have their own space in your document. And they're usually only used in tonal languages. That's where I've studied about it, mostly used in the tonal languages. So you would probably not be using them. But if you select a combining diacritical mark, double click it or click, click it and then click insert at the bottom, then this diacritical mark will go backwards and it will go on top of the letter you just previously typed, or it might go below the letter that you previously typed. So let's go to the next slide. This is what we mean by the, um, the parts here, this is just a section, a subset of that symbol pop-up box. These sections in that are in light blue, I put the blue color there. These are modifying uh, symbols. They, they're mostly used in tonal language. They're to show the tone. And there's probably other uses I haven't studied about. But these that are in the clear boxes, this is where it would be starting over here on the right, but my picture's in the way. But um, these would be combining diacritical marks. We have grave accents and the um, acute accent and then other marks. There's a, a lot, there's dots. But they would, you would click, double click them or click them and then click insert. And they would go backwards and go over your letter. So this is the insert, insert symbol. Go to the subset called IPA extensions section. These are, this is part of that subset, and this is part of that subset. So. And we are also going to show you a little bit about InDesign, just as an example of more sophisticated software. And in InDesign, it's an Adobe product, an Adobe um, program, you would have a um, panel on the right that might have the glyphs option. And a glyph is any character or any symbol in a font. It has its own little box. And if we touch the click the glyph pop-up, we will get a box that looks just like the symbol pop-up in Microsoft Word. And if you don't see glyphs in the panel on the right in InDesign, We'd, we'd go to the window menu and go down to type, the type menu and select glyph. Glyph and then they, the pop-up box would show. So you can also drag the glyph pop-up box over to the panel on the right and it will remain there so that you can use it again. So non-Roman alphabet, so we'll just speak about this for a minute, non-Roman script or alphabet. If you're not using a special keyboard for your non-Roman alphabet or script, if you need to type in this kind of script or font, and you may just need a few of the letters, you may not be typing your whole book in the non-Roman alphabet, but here's some things we need to remember. Be careful about hyphenation or line breaks. Your computer may not recognize the word as a whole word and might break it in a strange place at, at the end of the line that make, might make that line go down to the next line and it's just half of that word. It might also happen if you're using special characters in any kind of script in a Roman alphabet, a Roman script. So we need to watch for that when we're using special characters or a different, a non-Roman alphabet. 
In Microsoft Word, you can uh, avoid this, select the text, go uh, on the home tab up at the top, go to the paragraph section. And there's two tabs, there's a main tab and then there's a tab behind that called line and page breaks tab. And under formatting exceptions, select the don't hyphenate checkbox. And the other software might have a similar command to not hyphenate or, or a non-break. It's called non-break for this line or for this word. And you could find it in other software probably. So that's the end of this slideshow. I'm going to close that out. We're going to go to Microsoft Word. I have a document. I'm going to change, well, I can leave it in Times New Roman, but we want a large size font so we can type some large letters. I'm going to type a Y and go down and type a capital Y. And you'll notice, I hope that you can see this. Well, you'll notice that perhaps when you change the size, make a font larger, that not the entire font, the entire letter is not showing up. And that's because we changed the type size, but we didn't change the line spacing. So we're going to go to paragraph. And down here is the line spacing. It's set on 16 is what I use normally, but you need to have line spacing that's a few um, points greater than your the size of your font. We picked 24, let's go to 28, that'd be great. Now you can see the entire letter. So remember that when you're changing the font size, you need to change the line spacing also. And clicking behind this lowercase letter, we're going to insert. We're going to symbols, it's over here. I moved my picture so that we can see everything. Select symbols, select, this should say more symbols. Okay, I had to click symbol again. It's different because I shrunk my uh, picture. More symbols. Okay, well, a big box popped up. And we can see the name of the font and over here, the name of the subset. You can see how great this font is. We could scroll down forever. Fonts are pretty large. So you can scroll down and see what you, the special characters, or here in the subset, we can go to combining diacritical marks where IPA extensions will show both the modifier letters and, and the combin combining letters, combining diacritical marks. So these top ones here are modifying letters. We don't want to use them. And the combining diacritical marks start, start right here. And so let's just double click that one. I'm going to have to shut that box down. But you can see a grave accent went over my lowercase y. Let's do that again. Symbols, symbol. You won't have to do that twice in your program, probably. More symbols. You can also see that recently used symbols show up right here. So that would be easy for you to select, double click them. Let's go to more symbols. And there's the same uh, grave accent is selected. I'll double click it. So that went over our Y. So let's do a different letter. I'll just go on over here. Let's do an N. And usually we don't have a lot of accents go over our N. A, a tilde might go or an a grave accent or a, an acute accent. Let's try something different. Sim, insert, symbol, symbol, more symbols. Let's see, let's do, this is something from Hindi, the Hindi language, we don't wanna use that. But let's use, I'm just looking at all of them, they're so interesting, so. I don't know if that will work. Yes, it was very strange. I don't even know what that is. But symbols, symbol, more symbols. Let's find something different. 
the acute accent. There you go. And you can try different things. You'll have an exercise in your um, assignment. I'm going to close this. We don't want to save it. Let's go to Publisher. We'll do the same thing. In Publisher, we need to draw a text box. And I'm going to, it doesn't matter what font we use just for a demonstration, but we want a large size. And Publisher actually changes the line spacing, so we don't need to worry about it. Let's type in a Y. Well, it looks like it didn't change the line spacing. Or maybe it did. It's just a different font. I'll change it to, line, to Times New Roman and see what happens. You can see I didn't practice this a lot. No, the entire font is there. I'm making this pictures larger. So Publisher did change the line spacing for me automatically. So in Publisher, we're going to go to Insert. And we need to find symbol. I think this is it. Insert a symbol. It will show up differently when you have the um, entire the screen enlarged, the picture enlarged. I just reduced it so my picture of me would not be hiding everything. So we said insert symbol, more symbols. Here's the subset. We'll go to combining diacritical marks. They start right here. We'll just find a different one to put over our Y. It might be used in a different um, language. Oh, he just went over to the side. He didn't go. I'm going to delete him. And we'll try again. I just haven't tried all these things. It's really interesting. More symbols. It's the subset combining diacritical marks. So that's would be safe to use the ones we normally use. But I'm going to do an umlaut. That's great. And let's do it over the capital Y. Symbol, more symbols, subset, combining diacritical marks. He's always selected on the grave accent because I used it so much. You can see at the bottom, there's commonly used characters. Let's try this one here. That's the acute accent. Great. And you can do that with different characters. I'd like you to practice and practice a lot because you'll find it's very interesting. And in the next uh, session, the next video, we'll show you different ways to add special characters. I wanted to show you something about InDesign. I forgot to have it open. Hope it doesn't take a long time to open since we're sharing the screen and making a video. So we have a new file. You'll see InDesign is much more sophisticated. You have a control panel up here with menus. We have a toolbar over here. We can make all kinds of changes to the toolbar or to the control panel. We have to select this typing tool. I'm clicking and dragging to get a text box. I'm going to make this larger. We'll just type some letters. How about the O? We'll type a U and a capital U. Yeah, up here, you can see a font name and the type of font it is, if it's bold or italics, the size and the line spacing. I think we need to make this much larger. Size 24. You can see that InDesign changed the line spacing also. Now, usually we have a my face is in the way again, but that's okay. We have a, a panel over here that shows frequently used uh, commands, frequently used little tabs that we might need. I don't see the one I want to use, so I'm going up to Window, to Type and Tables, to Glyphs. So this is a pop-up box. It's much like in um, Microsoft Word and in Publisher. I don't see a subset, but here's a different uh, little box. 
So we can see if we have subsets here. I would go to extended maybe, I'm not sure. Or we can just scroll down. I'm gonna say entire font and scroll down. Scroll down using the scroll, go down to about the center. And they have all kinds of things. Maybe I'll change the font. If you don't see what you want, just change the font. Let's change it to Arial. And now let's do the glyphs again. I could have put it in my panel over here. Okay, now it looks more familiar to me. It's showing some of the diacritical marks, the combining diacritical marks because we recently used them. And up here at the top, it's showing recently used. Let's type an accent. Notice the box is staying open. And also we want to move it over here to our panel. I don't know what they call that panel, but that's for easy accents here. And that's all I wanted to show about InDesign for right now. Let's shrink that a little. No, I was trying to shrink it. We don't need to save this. I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> hope that wasn't too confusing, but I hope that will help you a lot. And practice, 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 practice in Microsoft Word and practice in Publisher. And these special characters you can use not only in your, des in your desktop publishing of primers, but you can use them in any document like a newsletter, any kind of letter, and other documents you might be working with. So that's all for today. I'm going to end the video. So thank you and goodbye.